Welcome back. Now, global gold demand reinforces record high prices, maintaining resilience in the first quarter and reaching its strongest level since 2016. Amid heightened geopolitical risk and ongoing macroeconomic uncertainty, investors continue to seek the safe haven asset. Joining me to unpack the first quarter trends is John Reed. He is a chief market strategist for the World Gold Council. John, an absolute pleasure. Good afternoon to you. All right, still seeing a good demand, good numbers here for gold. John, help us put this into perspective, please. Sure. I mean, there's, there's a couple of really strong themes coming out of this report, um, the first of which is record first quarter central bank demand of 290 tonnes. Um, that's continuing the trend that we've seen since the middle of 2022, when central banks basically doubled the amount of gold that they were buying. Um, and that's really helped underpin uh, the gold price during a period that you'd normally expect it to be under pressure from a strong US dollar and high interest rates. Uh, another factor that that's continues to surprise us is just how well jewellery demand is standing up mm. despite these record high prices. So that's reassuring, uh, showing that emerging market buyers of gold jewellery, which is really what the market's dominated by, are used to these high prices. And then the final thing I'd say is genuine strength in investment demand again evident from emerging markets in complete contrast to relatively weak showings in investment demand for gold uh, from western markets mm. so really this is an emerging market theme that we're seeing playing out in gold demand and responsible for for driving gold prices to a very large extent as well it is very interesting, uh, you know, John, and I must ask you uh, specifically around the trend of us seeing the strong US dollar and these high interest rates and the gold price holding up. What does that tell us about market participants here? Because this is kind of breaking the rules a little bit, isn't it? It is. It's broken the rules. It's left a lot of people in the gold market scratching their heads for the last couple of years. But what I think it is, it, it's that emerging market participants in the gold market are driving the price much more so than they used to. It's been a couple of decades now where consumer demand from emerging markets has made up the majority of gold demand. But I think now we're seeing this play out in price formation as well. So if the dollar's strong, doesn't matter. That's not affecting the, the decisions that is being made by emerging market investors and jewelry buyers who are very much more focused on the domestic economic conditions that they're operating in. It's very, very interesting. I must also ask you about central bank demand. I know uh, recently that was also quite a huge driver uh, of uh, the demand we're seeing. Are we still seeing uh, that being the case? And would that still be emerging market central banks if that's the case? Yes and yes. So as I mentioned, record first quarter central bank demand, and it's almost entirely being driven by emerging market central banks. The only developed market central bank that's active is Singapore. Um, which is continuing to quietly add to its reserves. But the vast bulk of the purchases are coming through from emerging market central banks. Let's also talk about a gold ETF. That's an interesting one because it looks like, uh, you know, investors are fleeing uh, ETFs and, uh, you know, choosing to invest in actual gold, be it in the form of jewellery um, and other ways. Uh, John, what are we seeing uh, there with uh, that instrument? Well, the, the flows that we're seeing in the ETF market uh, are similar to that that we're seeing in the physical bar and coin market, in that Western investors, whether they're European domiciled ETFs or North American uh, domiciled ETFs, are seeing what I would describe as relatively light outflows. Uh, the only areas where we're seeing positive flows in ETFs uh, are in emerging markets, and that's in China and India particularly actually in the start of the second quarter in April, where we've seen very strong buying from uh, Asian domiciled exchange traded funds. Also, John, help us understand uh, the demand for gold and technology here. It, I can't imagine it in an appliance. Uh, I'm keen to find out what people are doing with gold in a possible appliance and maybe even the, the wonderful collision between something old like gold and something new like AI. Yeah, I mean, gold is used because of its attributes rather than for its expensive value in, a, in technology. And it principally is used in electronics. So every piece of electronic device that can, contains a chip almost certainly has gold in it. And that gold is used because it can stand a wide range of temperatures. You can make it extremely thin and it stays strong. It can be bent. You can drop your phone. It doesn't snap. 
Uh, and it's a fantastic conductor of heat uh, and electricity. So look, jewelry, de sorry, uh, industrial demand or technology demand for gold is only a small component of total demand, uh, perhaps 7% of the total, but it's really important. If gold didn't exist, our electronic devices would be bigger, heavier, and not uh, last as long. Absolutely an important one. John, I must also ask, ask you, if we do see interest rates start to fall, what might we see with that gold price? Uh, might we start to see people looking less for a safe haven asset and then looking there uh, to other more riskier assets? Look, we believe one of the reasons why Western investors are, are not as actively buying gold uh, as they have done in the past is because of higher interest rates. You can now earn a return on your savings or in short-term fixed income products in Germany. And we've seen definitely signs of some profit taking from investors who bought gold when interest rates were really low there. In the United States, I think it's more a sign of the economic strength and the strong equity returns, uh, which are pro proving to be uh, competition for investment demand for gold. But one thing we're pretty clear on is lower interest rates in the West should remove some of the headwinds towards Western investment. So if emerging market buyers continue to buy gold because of their domestic economic conditions and Western investors turn a little bit more positive towards gold, that could very much help the price. Brilliant. Uh, we'll be watching and we'll be in touch. John, thank you so much for taking us through uh, this information. Always an absolute pleasure. That was a Chief Market Strategist for the World Gold Council, John Reed.